heading deep. This is a 40-yard field goal attempt by Bennett. Got the distance, and he's good. So even with the add-on with the penalty, Georgia gets on the scoreboard first. So we'll take a timeout, 8.53 left of the opening quarter, and it's Georgia 3 to nothing. be an attempt of 45 yards. Bennett from the near hash mark, plenty of distance. He's got it. Two for two tonight. 5.56 left in this opening quarter. We'll take a timeout. Georgia, six to nothing. Two of two in this one tonight so far. He hit them from 40 and also 44 yards. This one, a 32-yard attempt near hash mark. And he drills it. Timeout. 46 until halftime and Georgia extends their lead to nine to nothing. We'll be right back. This with a 28 yarder and a tip from the near hash mark by Bennett. Make it four a four. 64 seconds left until intermission, and we'll take a break. Georgia goes back on top. It is 12-10, dogs. This would break the record. He tied the record in the first half with four field goals. This attempt is going to be from 37 yards. And he knocks it right down the middle. So Billy Bennett. It's been the Billy Bennett show. 15 to 10, Georgia on top five field goals. That's been their extent of scoring tonight. We'll be right back. First and goal. Haynes with a pitch. Blocker spins off. Touchdown. Now Georgia will go for two. Now Georgia trying to get the six points ahead. Baron Hayes has really had an awfully good night for the Georgia Bulldogs. You don't just hit him once and get him down. Now Georgia moves it to the right hash because of the left-handed quarterback to roll to the left side. Musa Smith comes in a tailback. Gibson in motion. Looking for Randy McMichael, and McMichael still does not have a catch tonight. That one incomplete. Ron Hayes, a senior out of Bronx, New York. 137 yards. Here's one more look at the touchdown. JT Wall with the kick out block, second effort into the end zone. We'll be right back. Carolina well, had a lot to do with that. I understand that, but they, they, they just are playing with more confidence than they did that night. Pass intercepted by Ramsey. And he'll take it in for six. Looking up at the scoreboard, which now reads 27 to 17 with the extra point attempt to come. Tim Wansley knew that play was coming. He played it. He baited him, didn't he? He felt it, and he knew the short, flat route was going to be thrown. 28 yards officially on the interception. One more look. It's six. It's going to be a 45 yard attempt. Yeah. 
Good pass. He's got plenty of distance on this one, and he's good. Timeout as Bennett with his sixth field goal of the night. This one from 45 yards puts Georgia up by two touchdowns, 31 to 17. We'll take a break. Good job for the holder, and it's good. And they're going right at the heart of the Georgia Tech defense. They're not letting those linebackers with their speed make big plays. They're not going east and west. They're going north and south. Musa Smith gets the toss, comes to the right, gets the block, touchdown Georgia. Nice lead block by the lead backs in there, number 41, Jeremy Thomas is going to get the key block on this sweep. Here he comes, the little cut block right on the end of the line, and then J.T. Wall with the block, and Musa Smith into the end zone. Now Billy Bennett on for the extra point. The junior from Athens knocks it home. And despite having a 78-yard punt return wiped out by a penalty, Georgia goes 80 for the touchdown. They get it from Musa Smith from a yard out. Georgia Tech right there. Now Billy Bennett comes on, the uh, junior from Athens. Had a terrific season going until the last couple of weeks, and then he missed four of his last six. And this is a much different kick than he would have had the previous fourth down, at, if not for that personal foul penalty on Georgia. This is not a gimme here by any stretch. From 46 yards away, Kilgo will hold it. Got plenty of distance. Knocks it right through. Billy Bennett extends the Georgia lead to 10. Miami, Florida, and Mark Rick told me he is going to be a great, great football player. One of their prized recruits that they got out of the city of Miami. A lot of people wanted him, and uh, they're really high on him. He's in there right now at right tackle. Second down at the eight officially. Backs in the eye, Smith and Wall. Here's the fake toss, and Shockley he may stroll in. Chased by one man, Shockley into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Touchdown, Georgia. Nice play fake by DJ Shockley. How valuable is Musa Smith? Watch the defense flow this way with the play action fake. And then DJ comes out. Now, Kiaran Fox read the play. He just isn't fast enough to beat Shockley to the corner. He was there, Shockley just too fast. Billy Bennett for the extra point out of Kilgore's hold up and good. There has been thus far in this ball game plenty of fight in the Bulldog. Georgia leads it, 17 zip. Out of the air. On first down, play fake. Here's Green going deep. Fred Gibson. I just got it. Out of bounds. Touchdown. He got into the end zone. Marius Hester never saw the football. Man-to-man -man coverage. He never looked back to find the football. This ball was a little bit underthrown, and Gibson stopped to make the catch, and Hester never found the football. He was near Gibson, but had no idea where the ball was. Billy Bennett, with this kick, becomes the all-time point producer in the history of Georgia football. He's just surpassed the point total established by one of the great characters of the game of football, Kevin Butler. That was 21 years ago. We'll be right back. A routine he goes through now, and he does some sort of a a primal grunt, I guess you would call it, that indicates to Kilgo that he's ready for the snap. I don't know if we can hear this or not. Maybe we don't want to. I used to play with a kicker, Nick Lowry, who used to right at the last minute, used to pull his nostrils out and take a deep breath. I thought that was the goofiest thing I ever saw. Whatever. <laughs> I think it was the grunt that got it through. Billy Bennett, I said he was the career scoring leader. Actually, it's number of points in a single season for Billy Bennett. 
he holds that record and Musa Smith has gone over a thousand and the crowd responds as one. They are yelling moo like a cow. 70 yards of offense in the first half. They came in only averaging 380 per game. And this is by far the best they've looked. Here's the handoff to the fullback, J.T. Wall, touchdown, Georgia. You think he's not a senior? <laughs> he transferred from Southwest Baptist University back in 2000. He took over the starting fullback job when they moved Veron Hayes to tailback last year. And he's in the end zone. Bennett's extra point is up and good. JT Wall, second touchdown of the season. Obviously, he would not be denied. the officials but a good effort by Musa. That's a terrific call. JT Wall, his second touchdown of the ball game. His dad Johnny, who was a state trooper in Georgia for 20 years, suffered a stroke recently. Stefan Jenna, his girlfriend April is uh, in that group as well. And Wall for the touchdown. Billy Bennett for the extra point. Second touchdown for the senior. Wall family's a little bit pleased. If anything, this is a mercy kick. Yeah. And a confidence kick for Billy Bennett. Sure. You know, that right. last one, uh, the Hoyt Wilhelm special. <laughs> That looked like the effort of a 60-year-old man. Yeah. Here's Bennett. I bet he knocks this one well up. Well, it wasn't pretty. Counts the same amount, though. Three of them. 44 to nothing. Third and ten. Browning up the middle to the five. Touchdown, Georgia. Well, they've run between the tackles well all night. Whether it was Musa Smith or Tony Milton or this time Browning, Nice little cut there to fake out Daryl Smith, the middle linebacker who is obviously tired. A lot of the starters still on the field for Georgia Tech. You can't stop running if they don't start tackling. Tyson Browning, first career touchdown. He got it from 19 yards out. Georgia Tech four-yard line. David Green in the gun, three wideouts. Gibson way down to the bottom. It's David Green trying to do it himself. And he fumbled in the end zone. Georgia's covered a touchdown. Nick Jones, the center, on the ball for the touchdown. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Nick the Jones. center in the end zone. Nick, Nick Jones is a true freshman starting at center for the third time this year because of injuries in the offensive line. I bet you Krispy Kreme never scores another touchdown in his career either. <laughs> Billy Bennett for the point after. Somebody get my partner at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Bennett right down Peachtree. Georgia leads 7-0. So David Green hit and about the two of the ball came loose. Is the play before it's the previous play that set up the touchdown touchdown run and fumble now green 
And the ball coming loose as he's tackled by Daryl Smith and Jones in the right spot at the right time. Well, you got that right. That's the second fumble in three possessions for Georgia Bulldogs. They lost the punt. So a great opportunity for the Dogs again now at the Georgia Tech 13. Lumpkin, touchdown! Untouched. So Reggie Ball's old high school teammate is wearing the other colors, and he just rambled 13 yards for a touchdown. See, that's a backbreaker right there. Anytime you get a punt blocked, you're chances, going to lose. The chances of winning the game are very small. But then they take the, the ball back and score on the first play. That emotionally, momentum-wise, that's huge. Bennett in for the point after. And it's good. 443, and a game that was tight and both teams look tight has opened up dramatically. Courtesy of two quick touchdowns by Georgia. Dogs out in front of the Ramblin' Wreck, 14-0. is long on the season is 52 already the all-time SEC scoring champion yeah. who has 81 career field goals this one from 49 for Bennett kick on the way and that's why he's so good at what he does got it hello Billy Bennett the little guy from Athens a lot of those kicks he's made this year have not been the long category because Georgia had not done that well inside the red zone they needed field goals not today. You know, whether it's a short field goal or a long one, and he's had game winners, we asked Billy, what goes through your mind when you get set for a kick like that? This one should be easy for him. It's the left hash, and it's a 34-yard field goal attempt. So to try to add his 83rd of his record-breaking SEC field goal career, here's Billy Bennett from 34 yards out. And he's got it right down the middle, and adds three more for Georgia. 20 to 3 now. The dogs in front here just before halftime. Looking to add to it here. Lumpkin's a tailback in the eye. Thomas, the fullback. Lumpkin has already scored once today. Now it's the fullback. And no signal. He's in. Touchdown. It took a while, but Jeremy Thomas, the junior out of Loganville, Georgia, is in the end zone for the touchdown after the big first half. As a receiver, he does it here on the ground for another score. And that's why we are always talking about turnovers. You hear coaches turning about, talking about the turnovers. Well, there was a turnover by Georgia Tech. Georgia took it, went right down and scored. Great field position. Bennett in for the point after, and it's good. And so less than five minutes into this third quarter, the interception by Suggs. And then the big pass play from Green to Gibson. That got it down close. Thomas did the rest. Dogs 27, Georgia Tech 3. To the left. Michael Johnson down to the bottom of your screen. Low snap on the shotgun. Green steps up, throws short. Got his man. It's a touchdown. And it's Greg Lumpkin's second of the day. This one through the air. Well, they got another shot at it. They did just about the same thing. Nice presence by David Green to wait until he had a view of his tailback and then to find him. And it's a Georgia touchdown. Well, that's a nice play. You had a choice downfield. You look downfield and then you come off and just dump it off. Lumpkin was the outlet. Pretty good outlet. Yeah, very good outlet. Lumpkin, he'll remember his first game of the Georgia Georgia Tech series. A freshman who has scored on the ground and through the air now. There's Craig. He's got it in the end zone, and now it's 34 to 10 Bulldogs. Hall, Ware tried to block him, had to let him go, and then uh, Hall almost had the contact. Here's David Green. He's got Gibson. There's six. Touchdown. Senior to senior. And a mistake somewhere in the Georgia Tech secondary. Kenny Scott, the corner, had no help from the inside. First touchdown of the ball game. Andy Bailey on for the extra point. Fred Gibson 
Big play touchdown. Easy when there's no coverage. Georgia on the board first. Six yard field goal to pad the lead. Kick is up. And it's good. So Bailey in the rain from 36. Freshman out of Athens, Tennessee. Gives uh, Georgia a 10 nothing lead. The fullback now. Sophomore from Decula, Georgia. Shockley, quick setup, right side, Reggie Brown, touchdown, Georgia. I think Georgia Tech's defense was thinking run all the way there with first and goal. Another good call from the Georgia sideline because Reuben Houston, he never knew where the football was. Lee Jackson will hold it. Brian Jordan snaps it back. Doink. Well, that is his first missed extra point of the season. Andy Bailey, the only scholarship kicker that Mark Richt has ever signed. Hmm. Ugly. Mm hmm. So it is 16 to nothing. Shockley finds Brown for the touchdown. And the Bulldogs lead it 16 to zip in Athens. Mark Richt and his bunch on top by 16, trying to win their ninth of the year. Incomplete got us to this point, and Andy Bailey will not try the field goal. It's Brandon Katu. This is his first career field goal attempt. And it comes from 44 yards out. How about the roll of the dice by Mark Rick? Well, he has the stronger leg, but first field goal attempt, there's a little pressure on this one. Lee Jackson will hold. The snap is high. The hold is down. It is good. And so is the kick. Wow. I didn't think Lee Jackson was going to. Take a shot up top to Calvin Johnson, see if he can make a play for you. Reggie Ball, shotgun. He'll roll, he'll look, he'll tuck. In trouble. Drop at the 28-yard line. Fumble. Is it alive? I don't see any call. Flags are out. Touchdown signal. can you say? I mean, prying that ball out of there and then taking it to the house. Bailey will try the extra point. Up and good. Tony Taylor goes 29 yards on the fumble recovery at Georgia. Leading Georgia Tech 7-3. We'll be back. Got to keep him from scoring a touchdown, and we win this ball game. 12 play of this drive, four wide receivers set, and the freshman goes under center. Stafford on third down and goal. Three step drop, one pump, a little flip, end zone, touchdown, Mexico! from Dallas did he give it to you he was brilliant on that play that was a designed pump fake trying to get the Georgia Tech safety to step up on the short fake 
and right over the top. Massaqua did a good job being patient with his route. George is going to go for two here to try and get up by a field goal on Georgia Tech, but brilliant execution by Matthew Stafford and Muhammad Massaqua on the biggest play of the year for the Georgia Bulldogs. Second touchdown catch of the season for Massaqua, the sophomore from Charlotte, and here we go. Two point conversion. Stafford rolls, fires. Massaqua! Go to the well once, go to the well twice. You gotta love it. This uh, this freshman has been finding a way to grow up the last couple of weeks. Stafford, one pump, and he finds Massaqua. And Georgia leads Georgia Tech by three. 145 to play in Athens. And then the two-point conversion. Massaqua. And Georgia lead by three. And and I was just they're a smart bunch too. They're a very veteran group. They've got seven seniors on that defensive side, so they've been doing this for a while. They know where to come from. Brandon Katu will try field goal. 47 is his longest this year. But he's had longer in his career. This is a 45-yard attempt. Kick on the way, and it looks perfect. And is. Georgia draws first blood. With 58 seconds to go in the quarter, it's Georgia 3. Georgia. Second down at 10. Three wide outs. Again, Stafford in the shotgun. Georgia Tech hasn't brought a lot of pressure the last couple Whoa. of plays. Stafford. And now it's Stafford inside the 10 and gone. Touchdown. 31 yards. Hey, Ness, I'm going to tell you thing. You think Marino doesn't draw a crowd? Everybody went for Marino. He comes in motion. He'll come in motion, number 24, and watch what happens when he does look at the defense. They all follow him. And here's Stafford all by himself. There's nobody there. Stafford's first rushing touchdown of the year was against Kentucky last week, but that one wasn't nearly as dramatic or as long as the one he just scored on there. He's saying, Coach, just call my number. I'll do whatever I need to do. That's a little of the spread, the spread option where you hand it one way and all of the defensive linebackers are going after the running back and nobody's there for the quarterback. 31 yards and Georgia has regained the lead. As it is, Georgia's got a first and goal at the Georgia Tech 9. Stafford to the end zone. Touchdown, Massaqua. You take advantage of a break that comes your way, and you make a touchdown out of it. going to be a slant just to the inside. The tight end's going to go upfield. Easy throw, easy catch. That was in front of Burnett again, who was the guy that actually the penalty was on, if indeed it was a penalty on the previous play. And Bailey, extra point, and hit the upright, and is no good. And that could be big, because we've still got a whole half to play, and now it's just a two-point difference. 16-14. Let's go back two plays ago before the touchdown. And when the penalty was called, they said number 23, and there wasn't a number 23 well, in the screen. It's number yeah. one. It's uh, Burnett. Well, there's one-on-one -on -one Burnett and Massaquo. Yeah. Watch Massaquo. He pushes him away. If there's any penalty at all in here, it's an offensive pass interference. Well, he called it. He called it uh, number one and the yellow, which is Burnett. And there was no pass interference there. Guys, before we had replay, Officials made mistakes. Back behind Sutherland, the fullback. On first and goal. And it's the fullback, Sutherland. He knows how to find the end zone. He's done it again. Touchdown, Georgia.
Here's a kid that just can smell the end zone when they get down close. Last year, he had eight rushing touchdowns and two through the air and became the first fullback in almost 50 years to lead the team in scoring. And here comes number 36 again, guys. He's 240 pounds, and I'm going to tell you, he uses it all to get in the end zone. Andy Bailey hit the left upright with his last extra points. This time the snap is clean. He just tucked it inside the left pipe. So Sutherland, his 16th career rushing touchdown. A captain and a junior out of just up the road about 20 miles in Decula. Well, got to give him a little sugar. Take a look at this play. This is the one that's set up. Watch as he falls away. He's falling back right there. Uh, who who does that remind you of yeah, in the NFL? You got huh? that right. Play for Green Bay. I mean, Brett Favre, <laughs> he does that and he falls away. What a, what a great throw and a strong arm this kid has. And then one of the captains, Brandon Sutherland, straight ahead, just keeps on plowing, and Georgia Tech couldn't bring him down until he found the goal. Sophomore, though. Second down and 11. The toss to Brown and Thomas Brown down the sideline. He's gone. Touchdown, Georgia. And didn't we just see on the sideline Marino, Marino, number 24, slamming his helmet down because he wasn't in the ball game? It's not his day tonight. It's not his night to, this time because, because it's Brown. Well, and this is the offensive line you were talking about. Look at the blocking and, and take a look at Sutherland, 36. I mean, he's just screening off. <laughs> once, once Brown gets to the outside, there's nobody there. Well, that's just an outstanding blocking. And again, like you were talking about, Bob, they've got three freshmen on that offensive line. How good are these guys going to be next year and the year after that? Two of those guys are true freshmen, and one is a redshirt. George is going to go for two here. They capped a 71-yard drive in six plays. Brown flanking Stafford in the gun. Stafford rolls to the end zone and caught for the two-point conversion by Kenneth Harris. So Georgia tacks on two more. 31 to 17, Georgia in front. Can they make it seven straight wins? I bet you Larry Munson certainly hoping so, and he probably called that last play better than I did. As we head to break, it's Munson in his 42nd year. Toss sweep to Brown, needs a block. There goes Brown outside, 15, 20 yards. Thomas Brown, touchdown, far down in the right corner. We suddenly did something on that line of scrimmage, and we got overs for Georgia Tech. That's ninth in the NCAA. They come and they will hit you one more time. Stafford on the rollout, back to the end zone, touchdown, Bulldogs. And it's Trent Chandler, the senior, injured most of the season, doubtful to play today, but he answered the bell. What a great play by Ch Trip Chandler, and you know this offense, it's all built on the play action. When you can run the football, you play action, a little play action fake there, and a nice job by Matthew Stafford finding Chandler in the back of the end zone. He beat Morgan Burnett, the rover. What a drive for Georgia's offense. Larry Walsh with the extra point. First touchdown reception of the season for Trip Chandler. What a talent, injured throughout the season. Oh, that must feel good. What a great job again, play action pass, staying in there, the boys delivering to Trip Chandler, beating Morgan Burnett, and George is up seven to nothing. playing in this conference with as many carries as he gets every week. Average is nearly six yards every time he touches the ball in the backfield. Stafford changing up the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock at seven. At the 10-yard line, Stafford three-step gap at the hot snap. Touchdown, Massacroft! Georgia, touchdown! Boy, you got to feel good for another senior, Craig. How about Mohamed Massaqua, a young man who, as a sophomore, had a case of the drops, and the fans in Athens were down on Massaqua, but he's come back, had a huge senior year, gets inside the corner, and how about the throw from Stafford between the linebacker and the corner? Walsh kicks the extra point. 
And Stafford pumps and fires on the slant to Massaqua. Sixth touchdown of the season from the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. 14-6, Georgia. Third down and six as the clock is under eight minutes to play in the first half. Again, four wide receivers. Stafford, shotgun, pedal, throws, slant, pop, massive ball, watch out, gone! 10-5, touchdown, Georgia! Greg Tech has just not had any answer for Matthew Stafford and these wide receivers. Nothing spectacular about the route. It's just a little skinny slant to Mohamed Massaqua, who breaks two tackles. I believe it's Michael Peterson and Dominic Reese who whiff on the tackle of Massaqua. And this big strike, big play capability of this offense has Georgia with 21 points. Walsh kicks the extra point, all smiles on that Georgia sideline. And how about Stafford in this first half, despite the pick, has been dead on. And Massaqua rumbles 49 yards, and it's a 21-12 lead for Georgia. One of the better screen teams in the Southeastern Conference is Georgia. First and goal, Bulldogs at the three, Stafford goes and fires a strike. Again, Massaqua. Touchdown, Georgia. Or is it? Touchdown, Bulldogs. Stafford all the way. Just a little slant to Massaqua that time is. Rashad Reed, the freshman, once again gets beat to the inside by Massaqua, who gets the hand underneath the ball. Extra point. Splits the uprights. Blair Walsh and Georgia strikes just before the half and builds a 28 to 12 lead. Stafford now with 21 touchdown throws on the season. Georgia today 0 for 1 on fourth down. And from the eye, Stafford goes under center. Marino, watch out, 20, turns the corner, 10, 5, touchdown, Georgia! What a tr tremendous effort by Noshawn Marino. Craig, we said somebody had to step up here. No, Sean Moreno's not a senior, but of course they're playing for these seniors here in Athens. And what a great run from No, Sean Moreno. He got a terrific block up front from Sean Chappas at the line of scrimmage. Moreno read it, got to the outside, and a great run from 24. Extra point is true. Blair Walsh trims the lead to three. No Sean Marino, the leading rusher in the SEC, finds the edge and takes it 32 yards. Georgia, their heart trap is beaten once again. And they're beaten because of the energy that 24 brings. 32 yards. Georgia Tech by three. And Marino may have a question or two to answer about his future. Clock at 4.09 in the fourth quarter. Shotgun. Stafford throws a dart over the middle. Touchdown, Georgia. A.J. Green. And the Bulldogs fight back. Well, there you have it. Tech is going to live and die by the blitz. Once again, they come with a blitz. They bring the linebackers in the middle of the field. And Stafford shows some poise, stands right in there. There's the blitz, 59-51, Jackson and Jefferson. And how about A.J. Green? He just makes it look so easy. Extra point is good.
a classic between Tech and Georgia. Between the hedges, 45-42. Back after this on CBS. Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, moved down to the field in midseason to call the plays. Dials up Caleb King. Touchdown. They made it look easy. Starting to the right, getting all the flow going that way, and then cutting back. Good vision by Caleb King. All the Georgia Bulldogs we talked to this week, Joe Cox, Randy Curran, they all said the same thing. The team was still very motivated and unified despite the disappointment of the season, particularly the crushing loss last week to Kentucky. And they came out with great vigor tonight. 74-yard drive. After field goal. By Blair Walsh, who's had a magnificent year. 16 out of 17. He's one of the three finalists for the Lou Gro Groza Award as the best place kicker in the country. And that one's good from 22 yards. But it's still just a one-score game. 10-3 Georgia, midway through the second quarter in Atlanta. Georgia Tech defensively hoping for another stop in the red zone to force a field goal try. Cox with time, runs out of it, throws, touchdown! Michael Moore, the senior from Fort Lauderdale. 13-yard catch. And the Bulldogs are up by two touchdowns late in the first half. Sean, they spread the field, and they went empty. Nobody back there. So you have five receivers out, and the key to this is the offensive line. And then Moore is able to slip right down in the middle of that zone, and it's six. Rashad Jones lets you know how good it feels. And it's an offense that doesn't know what that feels like, a takeaway to set up a score. Ninth takeaway of the year for Georgia, the interception by Jones, still the fewest turnovers in the country in terms of takeaways. And that led to the touchdown pass. A beautiful throw by Cox to Michael Moore. It's 17-3. to Just hit the last couple of weeks. And Georgia keep the offense going with powerful football. There's Caleb King. He may go. Running away from the defense. Touchdown. 75 yards. We got 75. Blair Wall, Sean, for the extra point. Well, I guess they can keep the ground game going. It took 22 seconds total <laughs> to respond to the Demarius Thomas touchdown. This 38 yards for Blair Walsh. And it is good. Just inside the right upright. And he continues to have an amazing year. 18 out of 19. The best single season percentage by a field goal kicker in Georgia history. The Blair Walsh Project. <laughs> and a 10-point lead. He's got a lot of green to be able to get that first. First sack tonight for Georgia Tech. Here's Walsh having the brilliant season from 43 yards. Just give him the Lou Groza award right now. Holy smokes. Lou the Toe would be happy with that, with that little kicker tonight. He is kicking his rear end off. But it's still a two-touchdown game. 13-point lead early in the fourth quarter for Georgia. They go empty. Hurry pass is complete. Chris Durham with a lot of room to go. Chris Durham! Touchdown!
Play action. Murray under duress here. Just got it away. What a catch. Touchdown, Charles. Steven Sylvester. Murray with time. Get a nice pirouette. Touchdown. Diggins on the toss. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Ely. High school long jump track. Washington on the top. The ball's on the ground. Georgia's got it. Touchdown. Justin Houston. season. Carlton Thomas now in the backfield for the Bulldogs. Second and goal. Underneath complete. Touchdown Georgia. Michael Bennett. Let's not forget it was Michael Bennett on the block on the reverse that got the extra yardage for Malcolm Mitchell. And for Bennett, that's his fifth touchdown catch of the season. Aaron Murray with his 29th record setting touchdown pass of the year. A record in the Georgia record books. As the Bulldogs take a 7 0 lead. More to come on the other side. Into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown. Chris Connolly with the catch. More great ball handling on display by Murray. Well, on that play, you had the run fake and a pump fake. So now you start to feel like Georgia taking advantage of a strength of their quarterback. He is so good with the ball in his hands that they're starting to do a couple of different things and that was an easy throw and catch for a touchdown because of the fake. The extra point good by Walsh. And an eight play 80 yard drive eclipsing about four minutes on the clock sees Georgia up 14 to three right now. And Connolly has been a guy who's missed 10 field goals this year, who two years previous had missed five total. Been a tough one. Get another try from 41. And he makes good on the second one. Well, as this thing winds down in the fourth quarter, let's see if that three points makes a difference because Blair Walsh missed his first attempt from 41. Who says you don't get mulligans in college football? <laughs> Nails the second. Push to be the final one for the <laughs> Mackey Award instead of in the top three. On the fade. Touchdown Bulldogs. Tavares King. And the Bulldogs strike swiftly here in the third quarter. 
You talk about an opening statement to begin the half. King with his seventh touchdown catch of the season and the 11th of his career. A three play 36 yard drive set up by that 60 yard kickoff return. Tavares King with a nice catch. Taking a page out of Larry Fitzgerald's book. Hands it off right to the official. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Aaron White. Georgia with a lot of weapons to use down there in the red zone. And for Aaron Morey, that's his fourth touchdown pass today. What a nice throw by Murray. White, the tight end, was lined up in the slot. He ran the deep route in the back of the end zone. And you had Connolly and Brown run shallow routes underneath so that the corners had to play up. Good read, good throw by Murray. After playing an FCS school last week in Georgia Southern, and they're going with a hurry up here. And it looks like Georgia Tech was not ready for this up-tempo style of offense. That time, the tight end wide open in the flat. And it's Gurley into the end zone. Easy touchdown for Georgia. Number 13 on the ground for Gurley this year. People wondering whether Georgia would look past this game to next week's SEC title game where they'll likely play Alabama. <laughs> but the return would say no. <laughs> They're not looking past them. And the extra point is good for Morgan. So important in these rivalry games that you come with your best at the beginning of the game. Couldn't have been any better for Georgia on offense. Ready to play in a lot of instances at the collegiate level. Mike Bobo says he's never coached a guy like Todd Gurley. Looks like a man amongst boys. 6'1", 220. Second in the SEC, rushing behind Manziel. He gets stuffed here, but great second effort. Got him a touchdown. Stretched it out. And it's 13-0 Georgia. Really a 14-point swing as Georgia Tech was going in for a touchdown to the other end before the fumble. There's no quit in Todd Gurley. He got stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Talcho got pushed and, and blew the fullback up. And Todd Gurley ran right at the back of him, but second effort got him in. And it's 14-0 Georgia midway through the first quarter. Gurley jamming it in there, stretching it out, getting his second touchdown already in 14th rushing score of the season. Right here, a big haul for Marshall. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia. That's the seventh touchdown for Marshall and the third on the ground already for the Bulldogs. Two for Gurley, one for Marshall, and it's about to be 21-3, Georgia. As good as those two freshman backs are, I'm not sure there's a back in the SEC that couldn't run for a touchdown on that last <laughs> hole. And it was a huge hole. Nose guard T.J. Barnes was just blocked completely out of the play for an easy score. There's some backs in other conferences and other levels maybe of football that could have run for a touchdown there as well. So 21-3 Georgia. And this is a Georgia offensive line that has kind of coalesced as the season has gone on. And if they can combine this rushing attack with Aaron Murray through the air, who knows what can happen next week. Sophomore was a JUCO transfer in his first year at Georgia. And that's what Mark Rick does not want to see in this football game is have any kind of injury 
with what's ahead of this football team. He actually has Gates, who's played mostly left tackle and left guard, and they're in right tackle right now. Murray off play action, throws into the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown, Red McGowan. This is just the eighth catch of the year for Red McGowan. Good concentration as that Sweeney came in to try to knock that football away, but McGowan very sure-handed. Another touchdown for Georgia. 29 touchdown pass for Murray after 35 a year ago. 98 now in his career, fifth most in the history of the SEC. And the point after by Morgan makes it 28 to three, Georgia. Well, they've got it going on the ground with Gurley. They've got it going through the air with Aaron Murray clicking on all cylinders for Georgia. Missouri not joined the SEC. So they don't play Alabama, don't play LSU, don't play a and Yet yeah, they could find themselves. Well, they'll, they'll play Alabama next week, but. We're gonna find out. Yeah. We're gonna find out just a little later than what some people would have hoped. Murray with time, open man, caught. Touchdown, J. Rome. First touchdown of the year for J. Rome. It's 34 3. Just play action. It's a double post. J. Rome, number 87, working on the safety. And again, miscommunication in this Georgia Tech. I haven't seen a whole lot of defensive secondaries that have given up more big plays in Georgia Tech. And Right now, it's dealer's choice for Aaron Murray. That's a 30th touchdown pass for Murray on the season, giving him 65 over the last two seasons. 35-3 as Morgan puts it through. It is all Georgia here in the Governor's Cup. Aaron Murray with 30 TD passes now in the season for the second straight year. You know, we talked about the uh, freshman running backs. They've got some good young receivers. Malcolm Mitchell has stepped up, a sophomore. Wooten, a junior. Chris Conley, again, I know you like. He's yep. just a sophomore. And they're really high at quarterback in Hudson Mason, who is a junior backup, but their hope is to redshirt him this season. Marshall on the pitch. First down and more inside the five and touchdown. Gershaw has combined for four scores. Gurley two, Marshall two, and it's 41-3. They just pitch on the outside and he got that football over the line before his knee came down. Great block on the outside by the fullback on the safety and Marshall stretches for the touchdown. Seven possessions, six touchdowns. Had a little trouble there getting the ball down on the long snap, but the extra point is good. 42 to three. There's not been a lot of blowouts in this rivalry, but this, I would say, would qualify. Physical play up front. This offensive line has continued to come off, getting good blocks from the fullbacks and two outstanding freshman backs. Bowl as well. We'll see if we can get Uga to make an appearance before halftime. If Georgia can get on the board, and they've got Gurley back in the game to the left of so Hudson Mason after the timeout. Mason dumps it off to Gurley. Reaching for the pylon, he goes airborne. Touchdown. What a play by Todd Gurley. Superman, and how about that? One handed with the left hand? A lot of guys can't do that. They can't carry it over with two but he uses the one hand and breaks the plane. And does that get some momentum for Hudson Mason? Yeah, he jumped over DJ White. Watch White try to cut him, and he just jumps over him. And clearly it looks like sneaks the ball inside the pylon, so this certainly is worth reviewing just to make sure that they got the call right, but
boy if Todd Gurley plays the part of Superman there that was DJ White that was Gotham City underneath him <laughs> so he went sailing through the air as yeah, White did. tried to go low and went a little to the Georgia coaching staff hey we might need to go up tempo a little bit more with him because he seems to be pretty comfortable with that so now it's 20 to 7 34 seconds to go in the first half and this is certainly worth another look you know how athletic that is? I mean, he's going to his right, and it gives you that momentum, that sense that you're rolling. You will have had two straight possessions with points. Marshall Morgan hit a 56-yarder against Tennessee this year. That's tied for the longest field goal made in FBS. This from 40 yards away. And that well within his range, and it's right down the middle. It was 20 to nothing. Now it's 20 to 10. Things getting more and more interesting, as are those guys in Atlanta. Backer on the strong side in place of Watts. Mason with a pump fake. Back in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Michael Bennett pulls Georgia within a score. Here he is in the slot. Watch him get inside there, and then he does the double move to force the safety jump on it. Demond Smith jumped on it, and that allowed Bennett to get right behind him. Seven plays, 74 yards, and what a comeback by Georgia. 20 to start the game for Georgia Tech. Now it's 17 unanswered for the dogs, and we've got a game. Early the lone setback on first and goal. McGowan in motion. They'll run it with Gurley. At the goal line, is he in? No signal yet. Now it's a signal. There's a touchdown for Georgia. And it's on the verge of being a three-point game again. Did he break the play? He extended that football. Looks good to me. This was the look we just had. Looking for when the knee was down and where the ball is. You can't see ball there. Not a clean look there. From this angle, parallel to the ground. Ball stretched out. That's yeah, a touchdown. I, I think that's good. That's good. So it should be a third. It's the one that Georgia now has to stop. Yeah. Yeah, Georgia Tech can do that. You know, although they've gone away from it at times. Which makes it an interesting cat and mouse game, and we'll see how the Georgia defensive staff defends Georgia Tech now. Did they sell out to stop the run? They couldn't stop Todd Gurley. So now Georgia will send their sophomore place kicker, Marshall Morgan, out to try to tie the game with 4.22 to go from only 32 yards out. We are tied with 4.17 remaining. Georgia and Georgia Tech, down the stretch we come. What a terrific game. And that center, David Andrews, doing a great job. Early again, why not? At the goal line, he's in for the touchdown. And Georgia is a point after away from the equalizer and forcing another overtime. That didn't take long. Well, that to me was both offenses going right to their bread and butter for the most part. Bad Lee's probably been the best all-around offensive player that Georgia Tech has had. And Todd Gurley's probably the best all-around football player in the game. Yeah, just dueling. And I think Gurley's been spectacular in the second half. And the overtime. To complete the point. And they do. And we'll step aside for just a moment. So Todd Gurley keeps Georgia's hopes alive, trying to extend the streak against Georgia Tech in the rivalry game.
special stuff for Penn State. So now overtime number two begins with Georgia with the football. And they'll keep it on the ground with Gurley. Busts it up the middle. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for Gurley. Well, you're going to get pressure off the edge here, but look at the cross blocking up front. Great job by Dallas Lee, number 64, the left guard, and then David Andrews, 61. They blocked a huge hole open for Gurley. That was fantastic. Can Georgia Tech answer? 50 yards on four carries and two touchdowns in the two overtimes now for Todd Gurley. Yeah, you're going to get the pressure here from the outside. But watch the double block and you get there, and then you just get Gurley getting in behind him. I mean, a great job by Dallas Lee, and then a good block also by Gates, the left tackle, and just a huge hole. And so the pressure that came from Thomas meant nothing. So now can the Georgia defense get the stop? Mark Rick says, stay on the field, we're going for it. Yeah, you got to nip back like Chubb in the backfield. Why not? Hand off to Chubb, left side, touchdown, Georgia. Tempo, tempo, and more tempo from the Georgia Bulldogs. And even on a fourth down and goal, they go tempo, quick snap, Georgia Tech out of position, and it's easy pickings for Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb with six carries on that drive, 36 yards and a touchdown. Boy, the Bulldogs with an explosive opening drive. 75 yards capped off by the 12th rushing touchdown of the season by the true freshman Nick Chubb. Third and goal. Man, you talk about condensed. All 11 are right there. Thomas keeps it. And he is stopped shy of the goal line. Georgia says they have it. No whistle. Damian Swan. There he goes. What a turn of events. I thought Thomas was close to being in the end zone. One of our impact players and Damian Swan goes the other way. Paul Johnson runs out on the field to call a timeout. Yeah, he wants him to take a look at this to see if J Justin Thomas actually got into the end zone. And I tell you what, it is a good risk reward timeout. Oh, absolutely. A heads up timeout. He just can't tell. There's so many bodies in there. This gives you a different look, but he just disappears, and it's not the whistle's not blown. And all of a sudden, Swan comes in, he's fighting, he gets the ball out, and he's off and running. I think this one's going to stand. I have seen some crazy things. How about the Jasper Sanks fumble years ago at the goal line in Atlanta? Hey, you see Swan right there come in. He is finally gets the ball out. This is going to be a Georgia touchdown. That angle, you just lose Thomas, the quarterback. There is no whistle. And, and that's when you just have to hold on when you don't hear the whistle as tight to the football as you possibly can because an instinctive player After like Swan. Here, ruling on the field stands. Yeah. Yeah. They're in coverage, making it a tough throw for Hudson Mason. And once again, bend but don't break. 
defensively for Georgia Tech. A 19-yard try. Marshall Morgan with clean snap. Hold is good. And he will split the uprights. So Georgia picks up the three. The drive kept alive. 28-yard fake. And Marshall Morgan picks up the first down. But Georgia Tech's defense stands tall inside the five. Three-point game in Athens. It is fourth down and goal. 22 seconds, no timeouts for Georgia. This is it right here. Chris Conley, touchdown, Georgia. Malcolm Mitchell, touchdown, Georgia. What a series for the Dogs. Well, just a roll, they basically give Hudson Mason a sprint out option. Both guys, Bennett as well as Mitchell, go on out routes and Mitchell was the guy that came open cleanly. Malcolm Mitchell has been fighting through injuries. What a call by Mike Bobo as well on this drive to really march down the field, mixing the run and the pass. And there on a fourth down, he has the confidence in Hudson Mason to get it done, and he does to the junior wide receiver, Malcolm Mitchell.